Hey guys, how many of us have ever wanted to know what the XML import rule is all about with SOLIDWORKS PDM? I do. Well, then today's Q-tip is for you, and we've got a special treat in store for you today. The XML import rule seems to have been designed to update data card variables easily for you. The biggest challenge that we found so far over the last 15 years of working with SOLIDWORKS PDM is that there really just hasn't been a great use case set up somewhere where users can understand what's really going on with this. How do you use this? How do you make that XML file? How do you comply with the rules? What, how is this supposed to work with your ERP? So today's Q-tip is designed specifically to update some card variables for you from an XML file. But what we've done is we've gone a step further. We've created a CSV file in Excel because we're going to update several data card variables at once on several files directly from this CSV file. What we have in store for you today, we have a simple CSV file set up already. SOLIDWORKS PDM will use the import rule and look for every file in the vault that has the ENG 23, 24, 25, all these numbers in the part number field. That's the data card part number field. As we transition the files through the workflow, the import rule, once the import has been consumed, the XML file has been consumed by the database, PDM will then be searching for the next time that it finds any files that transition that meet that criteria. It's not as though you're just going to automatically update all the files in your vault. It's very specific. So it has some really neat use cases here. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. And we also have a free tool in store for you. This CSV file is comprised of several columns. We've got a part number description, material, finish, supplier, and model number. I'm going to update these fields on the data card for these files that are right here. You'll notice that the default values, model number, description, material, finish, supplier, those are all default. They're either dashes or there's just a base description in there. I want to update these in one fail swoop. I don't want to have to go through and do these manually. So these are the values that I want to update in those files. So let's save this out. Save it as a CSV file. Let's go ahead and close that out. And where I put that CSV file is right here. If you just double click it, it opens it in Notepad, I mean, depending on whatever application you have. But you can see that it's already placed everything together the way that it needs to be. And you'll notice that for every column that has data in it that has a comma, it's put quotations around the, co around the column data. It's to do that so that the CSV can be read correctly. All right, let's close that out. The free application that I was telling you about is our XML import tool. Its only job is to convert your CSV into an XML that PDM can read for the import rule. This tool is going to be forever free, and it'll be free for download at the link below. Let's take a look at it. Right now, this is really just a workbench type of an application. It has very few options in it. We're going to be expanding this as time goes on, like adding configuration support per file, adding additional capabilities, because there are additional capabilities with the XML import. But for now, Let's focus on converting the CSV to XML. By the way, you don't have to have PDM installed to use this tool. All you have to do is just know the name of your vault. And we can either press the button to open the CSV or we can just drag it directly into there. I like doing the drag drop because I like watching the grid populate. But that's just me. From here, you can also edit any one of these fields. So if we realize that Precision Incorporated was here but then down here there's no incorporated well let's just go ahead and fix that while we're in here and then any materials that needed to change or the finishes let's say something was misspelled you can double click and edit the field what do we do next we just save it as an xml file and we're going to place it into this folder called ce bomb export it doesn't matter where we place it for now because i'm going to show you where it needs to go we'll place this in this folder the same place where it's at this this file right here go ahead and overwrite it all right, says it was created. That's all this tool does is create the XML. Let's take a look at the XML file to see what it's formatted like. This XML has been designed around the SOLIDWORKS PDM's XML schema, which means that this file can be read by SOLIDWORKS PDM Pro using the import rule. It has the transaction date, the type. I mean, these attributes have to be formatted exactly right or they won't be consumed by PDM. If we're using an alias set, that means variable mapping. In the ERP, it's called one thing, but in PDM, it's called another. 
this alias set will actually do the translation for you if you give it the alias set here. We're not going to search by the PDMWE ID. That's the document ID. We're actually going to tell it the ID attribute Look up part number, that's the variable name, that has a value of ENG, and update its variables to this. That's what this XML is doing. But this has to be formatted exactly like this, or it won't get consumed. All right, let's take a look at also where we need to place the file. In our desktop, we have a server share where we're going to be placing these XML import files. This server share is on our network, which is where the server is, the database server, has to have access to this. Here's how that process works. The database server pulls this import rule folder every so often, depending on the frequency you give it, and then will consume the XML file if it meets all of the criteria. I just have a mapped folder that's pointing to this server folder. Once I drop an XML file in here, I've got mine set so that the import rule will scan this folder every one minute you'll notice that when I drop it in there, the file will get consumed and then deleted. So let's go ahead and do that. Drag and drop it. And then we just wait for a moment. There it goes. It's now been consumed by the database server, which means that all of the formatting was correct with SOLIDWORKS PDM. Now all we have to do is transition the files to the next transition that uses the import rule and those data card fields will be updated. Let's take a look at how this works. In the import rule, inside the administration tool, I just called this import rule import data card variables from XML. The database server has to have access to that folder, and it's going to check that folder every one minute. And this is the name of that folder. This is local to the database server, not on this desktop, but on the server. This is on the C drive EPDM XML slash import. If, this, if we're going to use a variable alias set, this is where you would select that as well. All right, now the setup on the workflow. Files that I have are in the work in process state. Let's quickly take a look. They are sitting in the work in process state, as you can see here. From the workflow, we would then transition them through this transition, and it's got an automatic return. This transition, update properties from XML, the only thing that this transition does is the action import data from XML, and this is all I do to set it up. Type is going to be import data from XML, run for files, and then I just give it a wildcard. And then we have the automatic return, so it returns the files back to this state, so that really it looks like nothing has happened. Let's go ahead and run these files through that transition. Before we run the files through this transition, one thing I want to note is that when you select the file, you look at the data card, if we have the at tab selected or the default tab selected, we might see different values because on this one we have configuration specific values in the description. So the import rule is going to search for the file that has ENG-0023 in the part number. And then it will update the description, material, supplier, finish, and the model number according to whatever we placed in that XML file. However, if it's configuration specific, it may not update this one, but then go ahead and update these. All right, let's go ahead and run the files through that transition and watch the XML import do its job. And we can select as many as we want, but SOLIDWORKS PDM is only going to change those that meet the criteria from the XML import. So if we ran several more of these, they won't get updated, but these will. So if we right click, change state, and then we go down to update properties from XML. This would also work if you're needing to update variables like revision or any other variables on the data card for that matter. But that's another Q-tip. Inside here, we have all of the files. We have all of the files that have been selected for the transition. You'll notice two of them are in a different state because they're in the release state. That means they're not going to transition. All we're going to do is just type in a simple comment and click OK. The files are going to transition and then the variables will be updated. And now the XML has done its job. The import worked. All of these have updated. You'll notice that the model numbers have been updated. Descriptions have been updated. Materials been updated. Finish and supplier have been updated. Again, it seems as though this is going to work very well for doing a bulk update to variables on data cards in mass. Again, this is a forever free tool. 
It's our XML import conversion tool. And we hope that you'll find a lot of use out of it and be able to use this Q-tip in your everyday work as you do your work as a PDM administrator. Thanks for taking the time to watch this Q-tip today and believe in the Q.